Good afternoon. How is everyone? It's good to see you. Alright. How many of you are with developers? You all are here for WordPress, WordCamp, and none of you are away from Alright, Alright, so, so great to have you here. So, today I'm going to be sharing just some few tips uh, on front end movement. So, my name is Fanny Yayich, it's pronounced as Fanny. Everyone calls me funny, so it's fine. <laughs> My name is Penny, and I'm a front end developer and also have been a WordPress user since uh, 2019. And I'm also an open source contributor. And um, for fun, I travel and I'm also passionate about conservation and also a writer. I have a personal blog running on WordPress as well as on Hashimoto. So, web developers, any idea what front end development is? Let's just have it like, let's make it interactive. <laughs> any idea what front end development is? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Uh, there is back end development and front end development. Back end development is mostly with coding, like uh, the making of themes and the making of the development of themes, development of uh, uh, other software like that we can use in the, in the website development. While front end is uh, must do with designing and then arrangement of uh, different resources. A round of applause. Thank you so much. So, front end development is uh, basically, it actually describes both front end and back end. So, when you take a look at this picture, what comes in your mind? You think somebody is actually on air, in a plane? That's what you see when this person shares this picture. But then when they share with you what is actually happening, this is what the actual guy is doing. So this is how best I can explain. Front-end development in web development is basically what, what the user sees. And then back-end is what is happening, whether it is um, APIs, functionalities, but with front end is just when you go to any website, what you're seeing that is the front end, which is basically the layout, as you say, interface, the design, and the dynamic behaviors and interactions. Thank you. So, now my first tip for web development is that. You just keep it simple. There is that that phrase, they say kiss, keep it simple, stupid. So you want to make sure that your website is very easy for someone, let someone accesses it. You want to make sure that it is loading fast. You want to make sure that they are able to, to navigate well. You want to make sure that everything is visually appealing to the users, the color choices, the, the font choices, so you just have to make it simple. You can choose maybe one or two fonts. Um, another tip is make it mobile friendly. Uh, nowadays, many people access uh, websites using phones. So there is what they call mo mobile fast development. That is like you're developing fast for the mobile user, and then the desktop comes after. So. You need to make sure that your website is accessible on all mobile phones. So you can use that by testing on, on your browser as you're developing. There is what we call dev, dev tools by Chrome. So you can check the 
responsiveness of your website from your browser before you actually put it out for people to see. So you can use CSS Grid and Flexbox to align as an example of um, Grid to align your items in the website. For those taking pictures, I'll share with you the slides if you need them. Because I have some references about Grid and Flexbox in the slide. So you take your time if you're looking to go into web development. These are one of the most important things, especially in CSS, for layouts and grid to just kind of align your website in a visually appealing way. So my next tip is using JavaScript libraries. Uh, how many of you are JavaScript developers? We have another one, yes. So, if you've written JavaScript for some time, you notice that there are some frameworks like React, Angular, they come with ready-made uh, components for you to just implement some of these, these uh, to implement some of these things we have talked about, like the responsiveness, you can actually start developing your website testing responsiveness from the beginning using some of these component components. For example, React has uh, React Bootstrap, and there's also Vue.js, and also Angular for that. Um, so performance. So you want to make sure that uh, your website is performing really great in terms of speed, in terms of navigation by the user, in terms of everything that is happening. So, by doing that, you can minimize HTTP requests by optimizing your images. When you log in to some websites, you see maybe some images are not loading. Uh, you can use lazy load if you're implementing something like that to, to optimize the images. And also, um, you can check for performances on your website that link page speed.web.de you put the URL to your website there and then it will give you a display of how your website is performing whether something is wrong with it so using this tool will help you to kind of work on your site and make changes that will just make it better in terms of performance because especially with loading loading time loading speed people don't want to on websites which is taking like minutes to load. So your website should take like how many how many seconds David? The best the best speed for websites, yes. <laughs> yes, actually zero seconds. A fast website should not be 0 0.2 seconds. More something like that. But when you use that tool it will actually show you what is causing your website to be slow and what is causing your website to whatever, and you'll, you'll be able to fix those issues. And then accessibility. Uh, accessibility, make sure that you're developing it for the user. Uh, one time, somebody somebody asked for a, a review of a website for a building, and I had to go through that website from Part A to the last bit of it, and I wrote a honest feedback about each of that that website. But then there were issues with the website, and I asked him. I said, "ABC is not working," and his response was, "It works on my computer." Now, when you're building a website, you're not building it for yourself. Who disagrees or what? You're building it for someone to use it. It's, it might work on your computer, but then someone else somewhere might be wanting to access it and then it's not working on their devices. So make sure that accessibility is at the fingertip when you're trying to uh, implement your front-end skills and make sure that everything is working and then it's very good to get feedback because it is from feedback 
that is how you're going to improve either on your website or on your development skills. So make sure that you connect with uh, people around you who are doing the same things. If you want to be, if you are already a content developer and you're facing challenges with something, make sure you connect with developers. For example, we have WordPress here. There are people who are good at one WordPress front end development here. So connect with them and get feedback from them. Show them what you have already so that they can give you feedback. And then to make it again more accessible, make it host it online. Uh, someone was mentioning some hosting platforms. We have Bluehost, which is one of the sponsors here. There is also Godaddy. So you can host it online so that it reaches a wider range of people worldwide. So another important thing is uh, testing. Testing, testing, testing. Before you put your work up there, make sure that you have tested it and it is doing exactly what you intended it to do. Don't just put it out there before testing it because issues are going to come and you're going, it's going to you as a shock. So I really recommend um, before putting up your site or before hosting, you have to test. There are tools like browser stack and cross browser testing to automate some of this testing process. And um, unfortunately, we don't have like a practical session for this. So, anyone with any more tips? <laughs> if you have any tips or any other questions, you can ask. The floor is yours. Thank you very much. So my question, my question is you took a lot of time with the CSS and all that. So basically, you are front end. Now I'm asking, what if, okay, for me, I've done the HTML bit and I'm done with it. Do I bring my, okay, do I call you and I'm going to come and help me with the JavaScript and the CSS and the like, going to do the final front end of because I'm not understanding. Okay, I understand what you do, but I want to ask you also get yourself involved in the HTML, like coding, which of the behind part of the computer. Once you front end is basically the user layout. So I think the perspective at which I was presenting was that perspective of a front-end developer but then if you're working as a team there is someone who is going to work on the back end yeah but then if you're full stack that means you're going to handle all the html all the css uh and then you come back with the back end which is maybe the javascript but however you can also use javascript in front end like i mentioned there are these libraries that can help you uh come up with really amazing user interfaces yeah, but then if you're full stack, that would mean you now you use another JavaScript uh, library called Node.js to implement your backend. I hope that answers your question. 